So today I'm going to show you how to get the most performance out of your uh, torque converter for your mini bike or a go-kart or snowmobile or helicopter or whatever you have it on. Anyways, so here we go. We're going to take the cover off first. Alright, so first things first, uh, this is a 30 series CVT uh, torque converter from Amazon. It was around $130. Um, so, so far I've gone through about two belts, then I uh, ordered the the pack on Amazon that's like $45 for three of them. Um, they're uh, quite a bit better than the other ones that I had. Um, they say the, uh, the numbers on them were different, but I bought them anyways, and it ended up working. I'll get so here's what these belts came in the bag. They were they're a different number on them. Uh, the one that I had was I think like six six nine something or something like that. And it had different numbers on it. But anyways, I bought these. They were cheap. I and they work. So I think if it says thirty series, you'll be fine. Um, but anyway, so just putting a new belt on will improve uh, if you have an old belt that's slipping. Um, but the thing that I did here are these. Uh, the little, the spring in here, the red spring. You can get different springs, but what you can just cheaply do is it has three adjustment holes. There's the one close to the front, the middle, and the back. I have it in the back one. It comes originally in the middle one. And if you see the belt here, it's pretty much almost at the top. Um, when it's in the middle one, it has less tension on the spring, so it brings it, you know, it's not squeezing together as much. Um, and it's further down in the groove, so therefore making it be a smaller pulley. So um, just moving the spring to that position, which is uh, it's pretty difficult to do because you have to compress the spring and turn this on and get it on there, but I did manage to do it. So I managed to get it on. I didn't have a pair of snap ring pliers, which I would recommend. This is a heavy snap ring right here, so a good pair of them would make it way easier. I had what I did... Um, I got the thing on, you have to turn it on, put it on this way, and then turn it like uh, counterclockwise, I think. T turn it counterclockwise till it lines up with the splines. As you can see, the shaft here, uh, there's flat spots in it that this thing connects to. So there's no keyway on this thing, but there's like flat spots, if you can see, right there and there. There's a flat spot. Um, but yeah, so the spring wants to, you know, turn. So you got to turn it and get this little the edge way down in there or else if it's up here it'll just slip off. So you gotta try to get in there, hold it really tight, then what I did, I got um, some finger clamps and clamped it together uh, from right here to the back, uh, just so I could then install the snap ring, which made it easier to do. So yeah, putting it in the, uh, the furthest hole uh, gives it more spring tension and then it has uh, like a lower gearing like it doesn't want to, to disengage and like uh, move into the higher higher uh, ratio so that uh, will give you more lower end power with also the belt riding higher on here so um, if you have this on um, like something that has more power this is only for six horsepower this is pushing maybe 12 or 13 around there um, so doing that, having it's not going to slip the belt as much. It's going to ride it out, um, and uh, you know keep it in the most uh, gearing, not bog down and slip the belt. Um, so that is one way of getting more power. Also, um, the so that's one that is the way to get more power. You have to move the spring to the far farthest back hole when they're on the bottom. So I just took this nut off and um, disassembled it on a bench and make sure because the spring has quite a bit of tension on it so you want to hold on to this thing when you take it off. Um, but it's not too dangerous, like you can handle it. Um, the, the only drawbacks from this are um, that it takes a lot longer, not a lot longer, but it takes longer to progress through the, to progress uh, like the spring rate because it needs to have a lot more um, centrifugal force for the spring to be overcome right so so that it can go up into the gear so it's almost like like you're driving an automatic car and it's like stuck in first gear but then you have to really rev it out and then it'll it'll feel like it shifts right over there because once you reach I don't know how many rpms but when you're going along um, 
it's fine if you're giving it full beans, but if you're just cruising, it'll just want to stay um, in the lower uh, where it is here, um, unless you're cruising at a lot higher speed, get up to the higher speed and then let off, then you'll be fine. Because then you have more more RPM of the wheel turning. But it's, it's a lot better for wheelies. Like I could barely wheelie it before, it would just slip the belt. Um, now with a combination of a new belt and with more torque uh, from moving the spring over, it's a lot easier, like you almost have to watch out. Um, but yeah, anyways, I will do a demonstration. We'll do some wheelies and ride it up some hills. And I think I have some footage of it before that I can maybe show, but it's kind of hard to um, to show on video. You kind of have to ride it. You, you'll notice a big difference if you do this, if you want more torque. Um, if you don't, if you just want to go for top speed, I mean, it's fine. Then you won't have, um, it'll be more linear, but uh, you get more performance in the bottom end this way. And then you do that, then your gear ratio, it seems way more um, torquey, right? Because uh, at first I thought I had it wrong. I thought I needed a bigger sprocket. Um, however, when I did this, it gave me way more bottom end. So that's that's really what I was liking because with uh, you know I don't ride it out you know on the road that much I do but it's more fun in the in the yard you know having jumps and stuff going through the ditches anyways so we'll get into a demonstration let's go.